as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, cling, cling. So that new life can be new life. Dear Heavenly Father, yes, that's our prayer. Yes, in your presence, O oh God, there is peace. There is shalom, O oh God. Uweponi mwako, kweli kuna amani. Na ninapenda, ningependa nikai, tungependa, tukai. Uweponi mwako. Yes, Lord, that is our prayer. Even to our dear viewers and listeners, Lord, may you hide us, O oh God. 
into that secret place, O oh God. May you engulf us with your mighty wings, O oh God, where we will find peace, peace that it indeed surpasses all human understanding, O oh God. We thank you. We thank you, King of glory, for your doing that is marvelous in our eyes, O oh God. We thank you and we honor you, O King of glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed, believing and trusting. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, our viewers and listeners, we thank Jesus for this opportunity, yet a wonderful day that the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God that this is a day of victory and of prosperity and of great favor upon our lives. And in our previous program, we were speaking about peace, peace in the midst of storms. And in case uh, you might have missed it, you can find it, you can follow that on our YouTube channel and I believe you'll see it down below yeah so and this is what we are going to be continuing with even today may you be blessed may your heart find rest may the Lord deliver you may the Lord capture your heart in the way that he'd want you to just be amen and just a recap of what we were talking about the, on, the, on our previous program and we were talking of peace in the midst of storms and we were able to see from the scripture from Luke chapter 8 verse 22 and 20 to 25 and we read, maybe I can go back to it. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side of the lake. And so they got up and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. And a squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. Uh, in verse 25, where is your faith? Jesus asked his disciples. Yeah, we were able to go through that text and we, we were able to see how the Lord was speaking to us about. It was all about peace. Peace in the, in, the, in the midst of storms. And we were able to see how these disciples merely saw him as a Messiah who would set them free from all these uh, raging waters, the waves, the winds. And we saw that Jesus was telling them, there was this part that Jesus was telling them, let us go over to the other side. And we saw that this had as much authority and power as let there be light back in the beginning. And we see that Jesus' ministry was never indeed without purpose. And we saw that, dear viewers and listeners, that he was crossing over to the other side in order to uh, enter into a new area of ministry. So in this text, we are able to see how the Lord delivers and is able to rebuke rebuke those winds those challenges 
in our midst. And we saw that, we also saw that prayer, the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God are very key, key points in our lives. In this walk, you cannot afford to walk recklessly. And we were talking also on the point that says, fear not. Yeah, the Bible mentions it many times in the word. Do not fear. Do not be anxious. And we see that in verse 25, Jesus was asking his disciples, where is your faith? You see, we say that let us face it. Let us be there to face all these things that may be causing us to tremble, to shiver. Let us walk with confidence, knowing that the Messiah is walking and going ahead of us. And that's why when you wake up in the morning, wake up asking God to order your steps and he will indeed show you. And the disciples were in a terrible situation uh, and the, the life was basically threatening. They were not afraid for no reason. And we saw that some of these fishermen were experienced. They were professionals. But they understood that this storm could snatch away their very lives that night. Still Jesus asked them, where is your faith? And we continue that the implication was not that, was that if they had faith in what Jesus had told them, they wouldn't have been fearful. And we see that the antidote to fear is faith. Faith kills fear. Yeah? Faith kills fear. Just as fear, fear kills faith. These are opposing forces. We need to choose to make faith the norm for our lives. Amen? We need to have faith in our trustworthy God. And we see that the Holy Spirit is a key person in our lives. And we need to take advantage of Him. Let me tell you of how I have encountered the Holy Spirit. There are times when you feel you're not ready for something. But once you ask the Holy Spirit for guidance, basically that is what Jesus left him to do. That was his assignment here. And when I call on him, he's able to do great and mighty things, even things that I did not know that would happen, things that I didn't know that I'll do, but he's able to just come and do great things, things that you, you cannot even comprehend. He's our Holy Spirit. He's that Holy Spirit that was given to us. Take advantage of him, my dear viewers and listeners. Take advantage of him. He's our helper. He's our guide. He's our protector. He helps us even in times when we don't even have answers. At your work places, when, when you've been called for a meeting and you're asked to stand in, for instance, for your manager, you, you're asked to stand in, but you don't have any clue. But once you call on the, on, on the Holy Spirit, He's able to come and give you even utterance he's a great God he's a loving God that indeed cares so much of our lives that the Bible does not ask us to use faith during times of crisis but the Bible says in that in that the righteous live by faith do you believe that the righteousness of God is in you. And that's why this scripture is saying, the righteous live by faith. We are called to live by faith. 
a reminder that God is our refuge and strength and never present help in times of trouble. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 23 verse 4, this is a known scripture. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. These are powerful words. These are powerful words that King David wrote. These are comforting words that even when you wake up, when you start your day, be able to declare that your life is ordered of the Lord, that your life has, has all it needs and it takes to walk through that, that particular day. Do not fret, brethren. Do not fret, my dear viewers and listeners, because God, God has the answer for that day. When you wake up, he knows how 10 a.m. will look like, how 11 a.m. will look like. So it's up to you to walk boldly with confidence, knowing that the Lord has already ordered that particular day. Uh, and I still repeat, <laughs> Jesus was insisting and he was still asking his disciples, where is your faith? when I am in the boat. Can you imagine? You're with Jesus and he's asking you. Practically, Jesus was with his disciples and he's asking them, where is your faith when I am in this boat that you're in? It's not like I'm far. And I think to Jesus, <laughs> he wanted to teach them because, yeah, they are they are humans and they are prone to experience fear, anxiety, you name them. But he still wanted to ask them and show them that he was right next to them. He is our refuge and he is our strength. In times of trouble, call upon the name of the Lord. And it says that, the righteous shall call on him and he shall answer. These scriptures are not just put here for you to peruse and just pass by. It's called, you're, you're just not scanning, you're just not skimming through. You are meditating, you're getting the in-depth of that scripture and asking the Holy Spirit indeed to tell you what that particular scripture means. And that's why I'm dwelling on this, this text because I want to understand what is the Lord, what did that mean then, and what does it mean now? Because indeed it has got, it has got great things, it has got a lot, a lot that you can capture from that small scripture. And we thank God that he's able to help us to understand that he is our God. He still remains to be God. He's great. You see, even the songs that says he's a miracle working God. He's a destiny changer. When we ask him to change our destiny, what are we saying? We are in, in fact, we are indeed saying that we are not comfortable with where we are at because we want the Lord to come and change our destiny because probably something may have come, something may, might have, may have come in one way or another and caused you to trip, but you found yourself still down there and you're not able to get up. But he's a miracle working God. We believe in God of promises, a God that keeps covenant. 
He's not a man that he should lie. He's a he's a God, a great God. That when we call on him, he's able to hear us and to understand us. Amen. May that be your prayer today that you will not fear, that you will not fret, that you will not be shaken by the worldly things because you have dominion over them. God when God created man, he asked he told man, go out there and dominate. Do you know what that means? You have power. And that power is in the tongue. When you say, when you command something, when you rebuke, indeed the Lord is able to hear. There's also a song that says Steve Crown says uh has sung a song that says demons tremble at your presence and what a mighty god you are yes demons indeed tremble at his presence when you rebuke those words you need to believe trust and have faith that indeed whatever you have said has gone to heaven and indeed it it begins to manifest there and then glory be to god because he has given us that power um i'd like us to go on the second point on the that point that says be assured of god's goodness um the disciples went and woke him saying master master we are going to drown You see the disciples doubled God's goodness. What did they do? They doubled God's goodness. They felt that Jesus did not care about them. But before we criticize these timid disciples, we must search our hearts. Search your heart this day. Search your heart and see. You see David kept there's a scripture that says uh David was asking God telling God Lord search me and see if there be anything that is not of you because fear is not of the Lord fear is not of the Lord you see I love I I love I love to sing songs because they take me to another realm and that is what worship does You see when these songs of Oh my life you have been faithful Oh my life you have been so so good You see when that person wrote that song indeed the Lord was had been good in that person's life to come to a place where she would sing that song so boldly and strongly And the moment she she still she, she stood in the midst of her congregation the congregation was able to tap that goodness of the lord uh when we go through storms of life sometimes we doubt god's goodness and even ask his sovereign will yeah we wonder whether god is making a mistake by allowing certain painful situations in our lives scripture says cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you i believe we all know that song it's found uh in first peter chapter 5 verse 7 cast all your anxieties on him because what he cares for you brethren dear viewers and listeners that is the word for you that is what the lord is telling you today cast all your anxiety because he cares for you let me tell you dear viewers and listeners god is interested in that small detail of your life just try him that situation you feel is less just 
just mention it to him and see if he won't even listen to you. He's a God that pays key attention to key details of your life. And you might have gone round and round in circles in your life, but one day, one time, the Lord will just bring you back to his will. Let us just believe in that scripture that says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your teaching us to cast all our anxieties to you and look and focus on you, God. Lord, cause us not to be double-minded of even your sovereignty, O God. Let us not be lukewarm, O God. If it's a yes, Lord, let that yes remain to be a yes. If it's a no, let that no remain to be a no, O God. Cause us to be even assertive, O God, in that which, Lord, you will for us. That even when the enemy who comes to kill, steal, and destroy, Lord, I declare that this day, these viewers and listeners, oh God, will be able to say no, to say no to the enemy because he's, he's not out there for our good. But Lord, protect us, oh God. Protect us, shield us. Shield us, oh God. May you uplift our spirit to just believe that you are God. We thank you and we honor your name. It is in Jesus' name we pray, believing and trusting. Amen and amen.